What's going on, Sideboard Podcast family? This is your host, Caleb Williamson, and joining me today is, as usual, Tim. Tim, how's it going? Not too bad. How are you doing? Going good. Good. Um, just, you know, hanging in there, working, all that stuff. Nice, nice. Same here. Hold on one second. I think we have a technical difficulty. Okay. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, it happens. Yeah. So I just want to ice break today's um, podcast today with a simple question. What's correct? 50 in the main deck or 60 in the main deck? I think it depends on the person. Okay. I I tend to lean more towards 60 whenever I build a deck. Mm -hmm. um, but I also tend to build decks that like turbo through themselves. Yeah. So like VegX. Yeah. So like outside of VegX, you don't you don't want to hit zero mm -hmm. because then you just lose. Yeah. Um, so if you're if you're like mega turboing through your deck, then more is better. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's less consistent, but you're going to see almost all of it anyways. And you guarantee you that you're not going to deck out. Yeah. I got you. I usually hover between like 53 to 57. Yeah, I've been liking that a lot more lately, actually, just because like 50 card decks are cool, but then we are in a weird format where like every strategy is linear. Mm -hmm. And so including those like sideboard cards that you would have sideboarded in the past for like a more generic format um including those in your main board is like really good right now and so going up to 50 you know 53 55 feels really nice i think oh yeah it definitely does what about okay, you so, where, where do you tend to lean towards on that spectrum um yeah i would i would say i always start with 50 uh, i don't like to start with 60 just because um I don't know. I'm a big fan of consistency. And mm -hmm. so I start with 50 and then I like to go, usually I like to go to 52, you know, add in, if you're not playing a one of Champa or like a, oh, you, usually you're pretty safe with a, um, a Mechikabura, mm -hmm. like a Champa and a Mechikabura. I feel like if you're at 50 cards, just go to 52 and add those two one ofs and you'll be golden. That's fair. Yeah. So that's where I like to sit around 52, 55 ish. Yeah, I, I think kind of staying around the midway between the two is kind of like the sweet spot for the format. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's get into today's topics. Um, so starting off, we just we're going to talk about today the most powerful Dragon Ball Super decks potentially ever. I don't know if... Um, I mean, there's a lot of like banned decks and such, but I mean like decks that were played in events. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think some of these decks are the most powerful because they all compete with each other. And so, um, yeah, let's just get into it. First though, we are just gonna do a, a set 12 re-review, second take type of thing. So I know you weren't able to be here for the first one that I did. So mm -hmm. we're gonna just do that real quick um so yeah let's just get started with that what do you think about the set 12 cards and just archetypes from that from within the set and uh, the decks that have come out of it i think it's a really strong set and it's yeah. it's created a a very healthy meta for the game i know like pre-set 12 so like set 11 and draft box um excuse me really yawny tonight 
um, set 11 and draft box six formats didn't seem exactly the healthiest, but I feel like with set 12, like you honestly, you could sleeve up just about any deck and be in contention to top. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like we're in a format where knowing your deck is actually better than just playing the best deck. Yeah. Um, I agree. I mean, we have a lot of decks coming out of set 12 that I was not impressed with on paper. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got King Piccolo, even like the Wii deck which is pretty budget outside of like Cell Xeno if you play that SCR. Um, but, you know, you got Launch. Um, I already said King Piccolo, Whis, and then there's a lot of decks that because of these set 12 decks, they've kind of kicked other things not out of the meta, but like made room for our other decks. So like Dark Broly came back, um, Invoker is back. And we just have like a whole bunch of different decks that are all like fighting fighting for top spot which is really really interesting because normally it's you know uh five different decks but like everyone knows which one's the best you know yeah. in like yellow broly blue yellow war cry format with broly everyone knew that was the best deck mm -hmm. it's just can you beat it right yeah i mean and then even like the introduction of set 12 into the game i feel like it brought back more decks than it introduced but it mm -hmm. still introduced like a solid number of decks into like the viable meta yeah uh, i i i'm really happy with with this set yeah um overall i have to agree i really like the set i like all the decks that came out of it and all the changes it made to the format to make other decks more playable it, yeah uh, it just feels like bandai really did a good job on this one yeah i definitely would agree there's been quite a few decks from the last set from set 11 that they didn't actually get any set 12 cards to make the deck better but the deck is just now in a good spot because the format has opened up. Yeah. So I don't know. That's I feel like that's a very good sign of of a set being healthy um, and the format being healthy too. So good job, Bandai. Yeah. Good job. Good on you, as they say. Uh, okay, so getting into just a couple of the decks we just mentioned as some of the most powerful decks in the Dragon Ball Super card game now and or ever. Uh, we have Launch, Majin Vegeta, Dark Broly, and King Piccolo. I wanted to highlight those four decks today and just give kind of our opinion on each one. Uh, I know neither of me or Tim, I don't, we never played Launch, but we both uh, built lists for Launch. It was just a matter of acquiring cards because we usually like to play in person. <laughs> Um, but we have between the two of us played all three of the other decks. So we'll talk about launch last, but, um, let's first talk about Majin Vegeta. I, I love this deck. Um, it's also like, it's evolved a lot with the introduction yeah. of the set and more specifically the ultimate deck. Yeah. I think the Majin Vegeta deck like has a, has a forward slash hyphen next to it and it also says ultimate toa so mm -hmm. they're kind of like hand in hand based on if you want to play aggro or mid-range yeah i mean that's put perfectly majin vegeta is just the aggro version of toa yeah well especially if you're just playing the green stuff Toa has, can be explored differently as well but yeah um the deck's nuts dude it, it's insane i know you you don't have the TPs, so you've been playing it a little bit differently. Um, Actually, I just got them in today. Oh, nice. You got a playset? No, no, no. We oh. ain't balling out like that, bro. 
two, three? Just two. Two? Yeah. Okay. They were like 20 bucks when I ordered them. Oh, and I man, think they're they like went up. 30. They're, they're going up a little bit. Yeah. It's, uh, the deck is gaining a lot of steam right now. Um, and I mean, it's rightfully so. Good. It is yeah. very good. Uh, there was a lot of arguments that the boo four drop Xeno boo was like ruining the consistency of the deck but like i don't know i just disagree strongly because i've seen the deck played as an aggro deck and i've seen the deck played as the boo version and i think the boo version is way superior yeah well i mean so like my my initial list it was extremely aggressive but it was like all in on the boo engine mm -hmm. i think i think like Finding your your middle ground between the two is where you want to be. So yeah. maybe not necessarily building it for like a turn two kill, but maybe maybe building it with the intent of consistently killing on three or four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's like a lot of versions, like the one we saw this past weekend, that one one of the best of one events i think it was a core tcg webcam event or something like that it was a best of one build so it was just all gas no unison mm -hmm. no no dormants no counter plays but it ran the boo the new one with um a couple it ran two turles six drops of the xeno two slugs and four boos that was their eight targets for the three drop or the four drop boo sorry yeah, I can see that. I mean, we've been toying around with like adding uh just slug into it as another target for the four drop. So like doing a split with slug and turles, I don't I don't really see a huge downside to it. Um other than the fact that the slug does stop your opponent from attacking your leader. So that might be and, a reason and your unison if you play Yeah. That. So that, that might be a reason in itself just to go four slugs and not worry about Turles. Um, but I mean, the the extra Xeno package is really just like adding a little bit of sauce on top. It's yeah, definitely I, not needed. It's not needed for the deck to function. I just think it extends the number of matchups that you have positive. And I think that's a, saying a lot in such a variety of format, a, a varied format. Um, and it's something that like favors my play style, I would say. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree. It gives you more lines, which makes it better against more matchups. Mm -hmm. um, so you could totally just charge your unison, charge your dormant. Yeah. And then like go all gas turn two. You know, as long as you play a couple of self awakeners, you're still fine. Yeah, and I think that's part of where like having the TP, like you you don't need it because like you can just play newfound Gohans. Yeah. Um or um Zarbuto's. Zarbuto or Dodoria. Yeah. But the added benefit to the TP is that it's a target for uh the bobbity and your leader to replay so a small benefit right. might not always be important but it is something mm -hmm. uh, but yeah i think i think majin vegeta is just starting what it is going to do i think it's going to do a lot more yeah i agree i think it's a really good deck um so moving forward we have dark Rolly, which saw a lot of representation about three weeks ago in several events mm -hmm. and it, it was kind of dominating honestly it it was it was like single-handedly owning everything yeah like um, even even through like violent rays and stuff like that it it didn't matter right and it's kind of curious i'm kind of curious and it makes me question like 
is the deck OP. I mean, now obviously people are learning to play around it and figuring out the power turns and like when they need to really violent raise and not just like turn one, you know, because yeah. I feel like certain turns you just don't violent raise. Yeah, and that's that's like the big thing when you're playing against like a titan of the format is you like you need to know the deck so you know like what what turns it is that you need to turn off for your opponent right because like right. if yeah. you like you said if you if you violent raise on turn one you just wasted a violent raise but like if you do it on turn three which is normally like the power turn that that's like potentially backbreaking right so yeah. pay attention to not only your deck but the other decks of the format i think going hand in hand with that is something that my and i'm a, i reference my sentient run deck quite a lot but it's something that it was lacking was um i knew what turn to play a turn stop violent raise nimbus mm -hmm. uh, dormant potential etc it was just having the ability to clap back on that next turn to be in a winning position you don't have to clap back like all these uh, other you know big players are talking about where you clap back and you kill them i'm talking about before that there's usually a few set of turns a series where you establish a winning position and then your allows you to go all in on a certain turn and win the game and that's that's kind of what dormancing on turn three allows you to do on your turn three or your turn four if you went first or second yeah definitely um and i think like if if you know you're not going to be able to go for game on the next turn uh like maybe you don't dormant or violent raise or whatever on the first attack maybe you let him attack you know two or three times that way you can go for board on your turn and kind of even yeah, make, the playing field make him commit to some some resources yeah because i mean Play that's long game. that's something that like i really don't see a lot of players doing and it's it's something that can like literally turn the game in your favor very easily yeah just making your opponent commit resources and then removing their resources it's i don't know yeah it's it's one of those like higher level of play things that you can't just tell people how to do it's like an in the moment decision where when you're doing it properly you 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 realize you're doing it properly and you it just comes from it comes from play testing like it literally just comes from play testing yeah i agree which it's it's really cool like it feels so good when you get to that point where you're like i shouldn't win this matchup it's but like it's like playing I 40 play chess out. when your opponent is playing checkers yeah especially in like today's world where everything's pretty linear strategies like every everyone knows what every deck is going to try to do so mm -hmm. you're gonna have to change it up in order to win the matchups that you're not good at yep so, um, anyways, a couple of reasons why I think Dark Broly was pretty dominant was one, um, who would have thought that like five 30k swings a turn was powerful? For like a zero to one energy, I guess zero yeah. to two, whatever. Yeah, no, no commitment at all. And then I just play a Mechikabura and then call your next turn's play. And yeah. unless you have another way to do something, it's going to be my turn again soon. It's basically like they took Kid Ku and were like, what if we wanted it to dominate the format? What if we just added free to everything? Yeah. And that's yeah. what they did. Uh, it turns out yeah. it's it's pretty good. And then they were like, what if we gave it a heartfelt plea target? Bro, heartfelt's amazing. Can't believe that card it, still... I, still left, still staying around i don't think that they should have made that target for it i don't know it's it's interesting because like that version of the deck's a little more aggro 
and um, like they are pretty dead cards aside from the two card combo. But yeah, I mean most most lists that play it, they only play like two, maybe three copies. Yeah, I've, I've seen see like it. very few that run three. A lot of them run two. Right. Um, three is too many. I always tell people like. We have this local Benny. He was asking me about some deck construction uh, tips, and I was telling him like, because he, I think, I forgot what deck it was, but he was running a card that he didn't want to charge. It was like a multicolored card, right? So like, say a rival. Say he's playing a red green deck. It was mm -hmm. some like a rival cards. He really didn't want to charge them. He just wanted to go like red, red, green, but no multi energy. And he had like ten multicolor cards. And That's I was really, saying, like, many. I was like, if you don't want to charge the card, you probably shouldn't run more than, like, six. Because you think about, like, the worst case scenario with your opening hand, and if it's all six. That's true. I think So that's maybe, kind of how I think sometimes. Like, it, one of the very few exceptions to that would be, like, an arrival deck in red and green. Because Nappa, you get to use twice. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, and that's like that's like a like very, very like corner case example of going against that general rule, which I agree with. Yeah, it was like in SS three format when he first came out, you saw a lot of people cutting their overwhelm package down to one card because when they discarded that card to charge two energy from life. They just didn't want to make it a possibility to flip double black. Yeah, I can see how that would be very bad. Yeah, it it, it was like, okay, cool, you lose. Yeah, I think honestly, if when I flip the first one, if it's black, I might just scoop before the second Dude. one even <laughs> is shown. My brother and I were talking about uh, for those of you who don't know, my brother is a math teacher. Um, is a he likes high level math, and so we were discussing some some odds, some statistic stuff for card games, and we were talking about if you have you know like a lot of people are like always focusing on the chance to hit whatever it is they're trying to do, right? So if you have you know you're searching top seven and you have like say 10 targets in the deck and the odds come out to be like an 80% chance to hit a target. Then everyone's like, okay, you're good. Right. But think of it like this, think of it as you also have a 20% chance that you're not going to hit your target. And so if you divide that into 10 rounds of Swiss, given we don't have large tournaments like that these days, but eventually hopefully we will. And we used to, that means statistically, two out of your 10 rounds, you're going to whiff that target mm -hmm. search. And so just like thinking about the the odds um, from the opposite side of hitting, so from the chance to not hit, it, it just kind of like, you know, people don't think of it like that. They're like, oh, 80% chance, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, I think, I think you want to aim for like 85 plus and hope to not hit I, I think that's the percentage that um i can't remember who it was but there's there's a pro magic player that like goes into all of that stuff uh quite a bit and i remember like a long time ago reading one of his articles and it was on on that topic and i think i it was either 83 85 or 87 percent is the number that you want to strive for to be quote unquote good mm -hmm. yeah i agree because like i don't want to put my chances of failing you know too terribly high but i guess some people are a little more brave yeah i mean it all comes down to the individual honestly uh, like you you personally go for like maximum consistency whereas right. I, I like to throw a lot of tech into my decks I think your 
number one line that I question is, we'll hit it, don't worry. And we With almost always hit it. And I'm like, nah, no, 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 no. You should at least do a two of. And you're like, no, nah, no, nah, we'll hit it, don't worry. And then after the event, I'm like, how many times did you see your, uh, Every you know, your whatever? single time. Like, Every single game. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm over here playing Sin with one cooler counter in the main. I'm like, can I just main four? Because I don't see this thing ever. Yep. Uh, feels good. Wish you I just, could draw good. You got to earn the favor of the one of. Uh, rough, dude. It's a real thing. We'll see um, one of these days. Maybe I'm earning it by playing aggro because I, I don't play control anymore, really. Control's too boring. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really played Control in a while either, honestly. Bro, in this format, it's real boring. Like, turn one through four, you're just like, how do I stop my opponent from playing the game? That's pretty much That's it. That's fine. I like doing that. Maybe, I'll, then, maybe I'll play Baby again. Uh, we'll see. It, baby just topped a webcam event. It did. I saw the list. Kind of spicy. Yep. My boy, Michael Silk. Kind of uh, spicy. Yep. Okay, so uh, moving forward, we have King Piccolo, which, which you have played quite a bit. Yeah, dude, that deck's kind of nutty. It's it's a little bit insane. It uh, has some setup though. Like you need to get the right cards to go off. It does. And I think like your biggest game against King Piccolo is removing their board yeah like it it may not win you the game right away and it'll like incrementally give them more life or whatever mm -hmm. but you you gotta get rid of their board because it's it's kind of dumb what like what the battle cards for king piccolo do so i i've i've kind of realized that you just gotta kill them on site they yeah. come down, they do their thing, and then you murder them. It's kind of tough though, because they're like all four, or they're all three drops. That's fine. We can so, swing into them. We're fine. You do have like infinity blockers though, which is really strange, and yeah. like kind of annoying. Barrier blockers. Yeah. Um, and they're fifteen k. So if you don't actually swing at them with something useful, I can just combo out of it and play the guy I combo. Yeah, the deck is it's kind of nuts. Um, I think it's really well positioned moving forward, though. I yeah, it only it it really like only loses to a handful of things, which currently aren't being played, and we won't go much into it because, you know, I don't know who's going to be playing those things, but this Caleb doesn't are want a, me to meta game him. No, I don't. <laughs> there are a few things that counter that deck, so just try to think outside the box. Um. One of the things actually is cost of entry. Uh, yeah. The promos are a hundred bucks each right now. Holy moly. Yep. yep. I think it's a hundred bucks each. It's basically like those, the draft box six King Piccolo. And that's and it. And violent rays. Se secret air of choice. And violent I mean, rays. Yeah. Uh, Army Reborn is pretty cheap, I think, still. Maybe not now with everything he's, going on. I actually don't know anymore. Last I checked, he was like 50 bucks. He's good in the deck. The problem with him is, like, if you're in a winning position and you just need a finisher, he's too slow. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of your high. panic button. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm losing. Uh, oh, hey, look, I won. Yeah. Which you yeah, shouldn't be in a losing position with that deck. You should have much more than two life. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, but and yeah, I think that, yeah, that's crazy. It'll teach you really how to like combo properly. Yes, I think number one takeaway for that deck for anyone wanting to play it, play the Piccolo Super Combo. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you Just put it in your do life. it. And then just combo with it. Just play the Piccolo leader. Super Combo. I know it's not the best red super combo. It <laughs> is for that deck. Play Piccolo. 
You're welcome. Is that your voice? Is that your voice you uh, you do when you think people are like being stubborn? Is that your? That's my SpongeBob voice? meme voice. I was gonna say, is that your Dakota voice? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> We're just gonna leave that unanswered. Anyways, so we can we can give them a hard time. Anyways, yeah. So play that super combo because you can combo with your leader uh, and you can put it in your life if you flip it and like it, it's not stuck if it's just if it gets put in there somehow just play it don't even look at other super combos just play that one you're welcome yeah <laughs> okay so last but not least launch i have not played the deck but i've read all the cards and the deck is like it feels a lot like red hercule 2.0 yeah, that's. I think that's kind of like what everyone saw. Also, it's yeah. weird because you can go, you can play like so many different ways. Yeah, although the most popular version we're seeing right now is red green. It it's like I saw the list and I was like, did someone just barf all the good red red green and red blue cards? Well, it's tricolor. Oh yeah, there's that, that one too. Yeah, the... so it's either red green with the burn, like the scramble and the. Uh, Piglet Jr. Eradicator of Hope, I think is what he's called. Mm -hmm. Or it's, uh, what, what is the other one? Red, blue with the splash of green? It's red, blue, green. So it plays Piccolo Jr., plays a rival Gogeta, it plays a rival Cooler. The super combo is um, Beerus. Beerus, and it plays a rival uh, Majin Buu Hercules. Yeah. And it plays. Um, Obviously, like the launch SRs and promos, mm -hmm. Violent Rays, and then the Secret Rare in that version is Kai instead of Scramble. Makes sense. So, like, your game plan is just charge multi red blue and then charge a green. And then you're and good. Then, like, you're set. Yeah. And then you're set. I, I don't know what green card they run to just charge. Oh, I think it's Hasty Dispatch Dispo. You can free play your launches. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty That's cool. It is, yeah. That list is good, but if you don't know how to play it, it's like you're just going to get like stomped on. Yeah. I think to play launch, you have to know how to sequence. And you cannot gonna, miss like, sequence literally anything. I'm going to go a little even further, too. I'm going to say to play launch, you have to build your own list from scratch. Yeah. If you pick up someone else's list and play it, you will not play it as good as they, they do. Oh, not even close. It's just one of those decks. It's, it's a very it's like, uh, weird deck. It's also the only deck that's not linear. Yep. It's like all value. So because of that, it's like all preference. Like 80% yeah. of the list is what cards you like to play. Which is cool. There's yeah, there's not a whole lot of those right now. Would, yeah. And it's like, it's like the red green player's dream because they get to play all the arrival cards even though it's half red blue yeah it seems pretty sweet yeah maybe um, we'll have to try it out once <laughs> once we get the actual launch stuff because we have literally yeah. everything else uh that's not happening anytime soon because like the promos are like 70 bucks each yeah and yeah not anytime soon but eventually maybe we'll build it and test it online or something who knows? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was, I was just going to say outside of um, the majority of, of decks that are showing up in top cuts, on the linear end, we have basically like the only non-linear deck, which is still actually kind of linear. It just plays a longer game in Invoker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, we've seen a resurgence of Vegex. Vegex and um, honorable mention to Mecha Frieza. It actually is like a top contender. It's just everyone knows what Mecha does. And so we didn't really feel like talking about it today. Yeah. Um, everyone thought Vegex was dead with the, uh, the last ban and restricted announcement. Nope, it's still kicking. Turns and out if you... you cannot kill him. 
if you don't know what you're doing, it will still run over you. But you can fight it. It's fightable. It's winnable, I think, with almost any deck. Yeah, I mean, it is honestly just like a really cool deck. And you can do honestly like whatever you want in black in that deck. Right, yeah. It's it's the um uh can it's like the the yellow broly of black where you just like yeah. blue and yellow cards or in this case black cards just chuck them in there and uh it'll work. It will. Like like our buddy Josh Vonsuela he threw Rangers the R- Cattle Pastela engine in there and I was like this ain't going to work and then he beat me and I was like okay this is dumb. And it wasn't it's not even good. I'm not saying play it. It's not good. But what I'm saying is it beat me. So it just it worked. Even still with everything that's happened to Vegex, it still just like operates on a whole different level. Yeah. Yep. And I'm not going to get into a Vegex tangent again. Just know that <laughs> if you've been on the fence about playing it because you're like, it's not good anymore. It is still good. Uh, you just have to get a little more creative. Don't play super linearly. That's how you get counterplayed. Unless you want to play Connect Four. Yes. Because well, uh, you is... are like almost guaranteed to win. You have Connect more is... double strikes than they have negates, I promise you. Connect Four's Wing Con is swinging with Kai. Yeah, you can do that. That's the Wing Con. You literally swing with whatever you whatever your heart desires. And chances are they're taking two damage. Just kill him with Kai both games. It'll be more funny. Nice. The old uh, Dangerous Journey Bulma for game. Yep. 1,000 I'm with power. it. Those were the good old days. Yeah. So before we get into Invoker, I just want to mention a couple of things about what all of these decks had in common and why I think they're some of the best decks in the game ever in the game. Um, the thing they all have in common is they're actively trying to win. So we are coming from a format where stalling the game back when Hatchiax and Chenron Invoker all like kind of came out. You're like stalling the game and then you played some big boss monster, usually your secret rare, and you won the game. And secret rares, given they don't not do that anymore, they aren't the cards they used to be in the form of like Demigra. Selzino even is not an auto win card like it used to be. Um, things like Hatchiak, we're seeing the Kai secret, the Kronoa go up in price like a lot, not mm-hmm. just because of collectors, but because it's just one of the best cards ever, like ever yeah. printed. And so all of these decks have switched the. Um, I was actually talking about it the other day and I it just like clicked in my head. The roles used to be your deck plays for survival and your secret rare plays to kill the opponent, but now they switched and your secret rare plays for survival and your deck plays to kill the opponent. So now your most consistent thing, which is your deck, is actively trying to kill your opponent and your secret rare, which is your least consistent thing, is stopping your opponent's turn. Like Baby Hatch, Kai, um, I think that's basically the only two. It's like the most popular secret rare right now. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, I would agree. The other with one that. was the other one was uh, Majin Buu, counter counter. He's kind of different, yeah that, but... and even the ape secret, the green one. Yeah, even that. that could be a turn stopper. Yeah. So it's just interesting how the how like deck construction switched and it made the format so much more variety yeah it's good though i like where it's at um i do hope that they the bandai goes back to printing a little bit more powerful secret rares because it is nice in the when sense of like ending the game yeah or yeah, things secrets that do more than just give you another turn yeah it's kind of annoying playing in a format where it's like, aha, I get another turn. And then you're like, aha, no, I get the last turn and you're dead. Yeah. Like we have, there's enough non-secret rare cards that can do that already. Yeah. 
right. And when you have... We have Dormant, Violent Rays, Nimbus, Topo. If you're playing Garlic Jr., you have Energy Field or whatever it's called. Uh, Baby Hatch, Dark if I didn't Buster. mention that. Like, there's... Well, I guess that one's a secret. We won't mention that one. But there's, like, there's so many cards already that basically end a turn. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think... The you need to make to your secret rare i don't think they need to be designed to also just do that yeah so we'll see though i mean we have more coming out in evolutions obviously and that's right the set's looking to be pretty cool um, i am looking forward to it from what we've seen so far it hasn't caught my eye too much i'm not a droids fan except android 16 uh that that sr13 is kind of snapped yeah we'll talk about that next time yeah. but before we close we want to talk about invoker and as it is the only exception to the, the punch sort of rule yeah the punch rule that's a good name for it um but yeah so like invoker is not actively trying to win until like turn five turn six Mm -hmm. but but their their end game is so good that it's worth building and playing a deck of cards that are strictly to get you to turn five yeah the, i mean that i don't ever think the deck's gonna move out of the format honestly the only time i think because like i played the deck a couple weeks ago and i played against green and he resolved my opponent resolved the Demigra unison against my vegeta twice and it felt bad and i was just like all right well uh you can't put out enough guys to kill me in one turn if i leave all of my energy open so mm -hmm. i'm just gonna do that instead of trying to play a vegeta yep. and yeah we're just not gonna worry about playing vegeta until i need to kill you I mean, it's a valid way to play it. I think just because of like the presence of Demigra, I think Invoker has to dedicate one or two slots for um, the Beerus Weiss. Yeah, that card's good. That way, well, like, that you still have your Invoker skill for just for your opponent's turn when they kill your Vegeta. And that honestly might be all you need. Yeah, the problem I have with that card is like, I ne well, for me personally, I never have it when I need it, and I, I draw it when I don't want it. Yeah, I mean, it's, but, it's definitely not like a perfect answer, but I do I do think the, the deck needs to be playing it, just because yeah, of how much sideboard. barrier removal there is being played. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So... Yeah, those are the the best decks right now, if not the best decks of all time. And and we're probably going to get some comments about um, what about Storm? Well, what about OG Mecha? Super Shen, those, AOD. We those know those are ones good. are there. They're good, and I know they're there. But the whole point is that they didn't have to compete with other decks. They only competed with each other and different variations of themselves. So... In my book, doesn't really qualify. I mean, like, when you have a format named after a deck, the deck is just broken. Yeah. So I think a, a good way to kind of condense that would be these are some of the best tier one or non tier zero decks in the game. Is non tier zero we're just excluding the things that don't they're not even actual games when they play yeah like yeah i agree okay so final topic supreme kai of time space time unraveler i think is a problem but bandai's never going to ban a secret rare what do you think I personally have never been on the receiving end of one. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you, and I don't so, own one, so I haven't been on the giving end either. 
Uh, so I don't yeah. have any like personal experience with it. Uh, but I, I can see how it is a problem. So just as a refresher uh, on what it does, it's a one mana activate battle. You play it and your opponent can't attack with unison or leader for the turn. And then you can pay one, sacrifice it to blow up your opponent's entire board and their unison after you swing. And the second one is an activate main. Yeah, you have to do that on your turn. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah, so like when you combine that with like a violent race, so like say against Dark Broly, right? And you're playing red and you have Kai in hand and a violent raise in hand. You violent raise, they're their turn Holy is spirit. over, and so is everything that they hold dear. Yep, and if they have a unison, it's also dead. Yeah, I, and again, that that only goes to further my point earlier of we already have so many non-secret rares that end turns. Yep. Don't, don't need make more. the secrets do it, because then you end up in this situation where you go activate battle for Kai... And then you play your negate that basically ends the turn. And then now you get to blow everything up. Yeah. Uh, For a total investment of like two to four energy. Yeah. Like nothing, basically. I don't think and it's so healthy. It, it's, yeah, it's like... And... Like, this is our little rant for the day, right? Whatever, doesn't matter. But um, one of the things that Super Shin format was, like, toxic was I sat there watching you play the game for two turns before you, before I died. Well, this is essentially the same thing, except you give me a turn. I think I'm going to have a turn, but in reality, I'm not going to have a turn. Yeah, at least against Super Shin, like, you knew... Yeah, it's like, I mean, you knew that you were dying on either fun, turn three but, or four. Yeah, it it was just weird because like they got rid of that and then they made this, which is in a competitive player's mindset, essentially the same thing. Yeah. Except you have to see the Kai, which is you know up to RNG and all that jazz. But like, I don't know, like what's the difference between baby hatch and Kai and a time walk effect of taking another turn. It's, it's basically the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, let us all know what you it. guys think. Yeah. What if they made a counter <laughs> activate battle effect? I think we do. I've thought this for a long time. We need Things that counter activate mains and activate battles. Literally counter spells. Like counter that Senzu Bean you're gonna pay one for. Yeah, I would I would pay one to counter a Senzu Bean. It, what if it, it like, like evolves our game up closer towards like the the level of play in your brain that that magic requires. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it makes, makes it way like, more interactive. And it uh, make it makes things. Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, I just, I think it makes it more fun. Yeah, it makes it more counter heavy, which is fine. First time decks. Um, I was just thinking about the implications of like a one cost counter activate battle that says it. Not even like it counters the effect, like the whole effect, because that could be you know like pay one negate your Kai. That's kind of dumb, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but what if it was just like counter activate battle um, if the card your opponent is playing is an extra card it's sent to drop instead and doesn't get its effect right so it hits like bean and those kinds of things uh, and even like um, even like crack in space time it hits stuff like that right so that's super yeah. good and then like and maybe if it's a battle card it it's just played. It doesn't get its actual. So it's effect. like bloodlusted. Yeah, you're bloodlusting the the activate battle. 
but it still gets yeah. played. So, well, that would just be bloodlust in that case, but yeah. Because you can just bloodlust a battle card. Which they correct. just made a new one. But anyway, so back to the countering Senzubin thing, right? So then, like, Senzubin's not your most reliable source of untapping. So then you have to play cards like um, oh my God, uh, Final Hope Slash, right? Mm -hmm. It's free, it untaps one, it bounces a one drop. Uh, I don't see any problems with it. If your opponent counters it, you could just do another one. Yep. In the in not the same attack, but like the next attack. It makes like sucky cards a little bit better. Yeah, I think it just I think it yeah. opens up like a whole like a whole new way to play. Yeah, because there was like so many things you can't interact with, but if you made it to where you could, that'd be interesting. So like. Here, here's a good case if we had things that countered activate battle or even activate main uh, then things like minus killy zone wouldn't be as much of a problem for the game because you can counter it oh I see what you're saying yeah so like if it goes off I can't do anything for your turn but then I can also just play cards to counter it yeah interesting so then decks that want to take you know a more mid-range or controlling approach they can afford to play cards like that it, i i think it just like solidifies the the general archetype of the decks even further so like aggro will not play those kind of cards they don't have the space for them that's not what they want to do mid-range yeah, maybe plays a couple control plays probably as many as they can yeah, I think the fine line will have to be what effects are you targeting and what do you want it to counter, like the thing to counter, and don't, you know, have have enough oversight to where it doesn't have collateral damage that just ruins something. And I think that's the fine line with this type of card, is it could have a very big collateral that just ruins the game. Potentially, but I mean, we'll never know unless Bandai tries it. Yeah, yeah, and if you print it and it's terrible, then just ban it. I mean, that's simple as that. Yeah. Like, ban it minus before zone probably shouldn't have existed in the current state of the game. So, they just banned it. So, simple as that. Yeah, and the, like... Or you could allow it in, like, best of one. It's banned in best of three and allowed in best of one. You know? Yeah, and Stuff that, like, that. directly supports the game having more than one format yeah I which think i think is cool like we should have more than one format yeah free my friend reboot gohan he wants to play best of one and clap some people it's fine we have majin vegeta now also like unban True. some stuff for bo1 i want to play aod i want to i want to oh, I I get you're my saying. smack on so like, oh, I got you. Interesting. I wonder if that, yeah. That's a fun a Give me child's we'll wish. Have to have, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll do that next another time. time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so that was our last topic for today. Um, but before we close, let's get our housekeeping done. If you want to take that over, Tim. Yeah. Um, I know we mentioned a lot of cards today. If there's anything that you guys are interested in, uh, whether it be Dragon Ball, Magic, Pokemon, what have you, uh, Digimon's up on TCG Player now also, uh, check out our TCG Player affiliate link. It costs you nothing extra, it gives us a little bit of a kickback, uh, helps support what we're doing, uh, keeps the lights on and all that good stuff. Uh, we also have Literally. our... yeah. Uh, these these nice lights on both sides of me and I'm pretty sure Caleb too um, shop sponsor madtowntcg.com uh, they do all kinds of sealed product uh, they have cool little knickknacks and stuff also uh, check them out let them know we sent you uh, and then the last is our merch store uh, still in the process of moving sites for that and adding some stuff. 
I've been extremely busy at work, so I've been lacking a little bit on that. Uh, but we're going to get it done. We're going to get everything moved, I believe, to Teespring is where we're going to start moving stuff to. Yeah, we'll move over to Teespring and it'll be integrated into the web page for YouTube. So like at the bottom of the video, it'll just have like little links you can click. That way you don't have to click on the link. Yeah, in the description we'll just start well linking all that. that instead of the old merch store. Uh, yeah, but for right now, quick, it uh, is still the, the Streamlabs, Streamlabs link for now. Yeah, and then a quick um, feedback on there. I've been hearing people having trouble with that on mobile so if you're having trouble just shoot over to your desktop or laptop and it should work just fine yep um is there any other news you would like to share or is that it for this one uh that's gonna be it for this week guys this is the sideboard podcast checking out Peace. see ya